Here we go. Purple Eagles inbound. And here's Wanye with the basketball. 20 seconds left as he walks it near center court. Now he's over the stripe. 15 left on the game clock. Purple Eagles will hold for the final shot. Here's Wanye. Between the legs he goes. Seven seconds left. Backing out the dribble. Spins away from traffic. Pass in the paint. Slam through with two hands by Holly Langford. Langford gives the Purple Eagles the lead with the two-hand finish. Timeout, Ryder. 84-82, Niagara leads it. 3.7 seconds left. Spinning in the lane was Wanye Green. He found Ali Lankford, who Coach Mahalik put in when he had a choice to make a few minutes ago. When Tanksley fouled out, would it be Ali, would it be Scooter, would it be Joe? To be frank, any one of those three players could have slammed that one in with two hands. 3.7 seconds left, and with the Bronx calling timeout, we will step aside. 10 seconds for station identification. This is Purple Eagles basketball on the Niagara Sports Network. Well, we may have to double up the new era cap play of the game because if Niagara wins this game, then the slam dunk by Ali Langford, who had a clear path to the bucket. He can't really fault Ryder because they had to be so cognizant of Wanye Green and how well he had been scoring here in this game. So here we go, 3.7 seconds left. And the teams had come out of the huddle. And now they are going to get around the monitor. And this may be just to verify how much time is left. Right now it says 3.7 seconds left. And I'm not sure if, of course, the officials will alert the official clock operator as to how much to put up. And I don't think on our purpleeagles.com all-access shot, I don't think we have a, a second hand ticking down in, in the game. 3.7 looked awfully good. I think 0 0.7 would look better, but uh, 3.7 is what's up there right now. Niagara 84, Ryder 82. Purple Eagles break the huddle. The officials still huddled around the monitor. Talked about this game had great pace at the outset. There have been a couple of long stoppages, and they're going to leave it at 3.7. That is the judge to be the correct time. So here we go. Anthony Miles will pull the trigger for the Bronx. The Purple Eagles, let's see if they put anyone on the ball. They won't. 84-82. Miles is instructed by the official. He can run the baseline. Here we go. He has the basketball. Niagara with a two-point lead, 84-82. And Miles will call timeout. Miles calls timeout. And I'll tell you what, the groan from the crowd behind us is because Anthony Miles, his momentum nearly carried him into the court. Other than being turned around the other way, it was it was eerily similar to Ahmad Bradshaw falling into the end zone when he didn't want to. He tried to keep his body outside of the goal line. Well, there another line in place, this time the baseline. And Anthony Miles, he came awfully close to crossing the line. I don't know if we can have a look at it on the replay or not. 3.7 seconds left. We know both sides are now out of timeouts. And there he is. His left foot touched the line. I'll tell you what. Fantastic job by the Ghost Line Entertainment crew up top. And I don't know if they can replay that. To be honest, I don't think they can. 3.7 seconds left. Because it is. I think it is ju uh, just a missed call. I'll tell you what. If they get the officials and they look at this thing, folks, it's going to be Purple Eagle basketball. 84-82 the score, 3.7 seconds left. Miles clear as day put that left foot on the line. How about that? This game has had it all. John Cacciatore on stats is looking for some water. It's been exhausting here. Don't forget, Purple Eagles post-game show comes your way following this one. Well, here, here we go. Here's again that, that decision about a three-pointer. Will Ryder opt for the three? We saw this exact same situation, a different score, 
but on Thursday night, Siena was down by two. They gave it to Kyle Downey. He went in the paint and took a two-point shot. It rimmed out. Niger got the rebound. Wanya made two free throws, and it was lights out for the Saints. That was with an inbounds play near half court with a dozen seconds left. Here's Ryder with 3.7. Now they shouldn't be able to do that after the timeout. Here comes Thompson. He'll pull up a three at the buzzer. Good! Jonathan Thompson knocked in the three. They'll probably take a look at it, but I'll tell you what, this is going to be heartbreaking in successive games against Ryder if they knocked in that three-pointer. Jonathan Thompson buried it. It sure looked like a good three from here. Now Tommy Dempsey and Coach Mahalik are with the officials at the scorer's table. My question is, after the timeout, were they allowed to throw the basketball to the teammate, or is it a turnover? Right now, it, the score says 84-82, but that, that was a three-pointer, and Jonathan Thompson, he drilled it. Here we go. On the replay, Thompson just in a dead sprint, off-balance shot, knocked down that three over Wanye Green, and they're going to look and see if the release was in time. If we can cue that up one more time on the purpleeagles.com side, we'll keep our eye on the backboard because it illuminates red when the clock goes off. And here's Jonathan Thompson. We'll see if the backboard is in view. And he has the ball in his hands. He has the ball in his hands when that clock goes off. This is no good. This is no good. This should not be good. This should not be good. This should not be good. The Purple Eagles, I think, are going to win this one 84-82. Because you look at this, and his hand is in the ball when the backboard lights up. That is not good. No way. The voice, I'm telling you folks, that that one should not count. Nope. They are huddled around the monitor. This is a great job by PurpleEagles.com. Wow. Here's Coach Mahalik, and Tommy Dempsey come together. They're going to they're gonna handshake now because one way or another, this game is concluded. It's either another heart-stopping win by the Bronx or the Purple Eagles escape with an 84-82 win. This is awfully close. I'm telling you, folks, it, 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 it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. And I'm sure I'm not supposed to do that. I'm sure I'm not supposed to get that animated. But this one is, they're, they're going to take, they haven't put it up on the board and they shouldn't. Even the Ryder radio guy had come over to take a look at our monitor. So don't forget, the post-game show comes your way shortly. Try and catch up with one of the Purple Eagles assistant coaches. I know. Purple Eagles leading at 84-82. A lot of folks coming over just to make sure I'm all right. A number of people know that we have a monitor over here, and, and you know, we didn't keep it a secret that the ball was in his hand. So this this has really taken a long time. But And I'll tell you what, it's a little bit of, it may be a different camera angle that they're looking at over there as opposed to the one that we have here. But what they ought to do is come over here because Jonathan Thompson rises up. It's a heck of a shot from about 25 feet, but the ball is in his hands, and this one, this cannot count. They are still over there looking at it. It's close, but, you know, it's not that close. If they have the angle that we have, it, it's really not as, as close as, as this should stretch out this long. I think they have a different look. Now, this is, this is classic because there are fans now behind. There's no, there's no doubt. Is it the same camera angle over there that we have here? If, if, it, is, it's, if it is, it's 84-82 final because this ball is clearly in Jonathan Thompson's hands. And how critical was that? They, they looked at the time beforehand. They left it at 3.7, and if they put it to 3.8 or 3.9, Ryder wins this game. But at 3.7, it is no good. And let's see if we can cue that one up one more time here. If they can cue this up again, this is 
if it's the same angle over there. The ball was in his hand when the, when the backboard went red. The ball was still in Jonathan Thompson's hand as the backboard lit up. This is an awfully close call. Thompson rises up, and the, the backboard goes red as he releases it. They are still looking this over. We've gone through all the reads. We can take a peek at the modern recycling out-of-town scoreboard. There is a lot of pressure on the officiating crew. How about that? Tony Crisp, Kenny Clark, and Rusty Cooper are the three officials here today. Manhattan has won 85-63 the final. Siena has defeated Kenesha 60-50. to Fair to say we've got some Siena Saints and perhaps Golden Griffins tuned in here to see how this one's going to conclude. Siena's hoping that the basket is good by Ryder. Siena will be alone in sixth place if they count this three-point field goal. But I'll tell you what, they shouldn't. I don't know if it's in HD over there, but it's in HD over here. We have a very clear angle. And we are not going to send it to timeout or anything. We're just going to keep things right here. I think the crowd will, will let you know. This is, a, this is a classic scene. There are the chairbacks that are on the other side of the floor across from us. Everyone's standing and, and trying to get a look at that monitor. Same thing going on behind us. And the crowd has, has gone through a couple different emotions here. There was jubilation, then there was some groaning. And as the backboard lights up, the ball is clearly in Jonathan Thompson's hands. And I don't know if the officials should come over here and look at this one. Although, you know what, they can't, they can't look at this one because this is something that the MAC instituted this year was they had to have internal replays. And so it is from the same spot every game and we have the monitor because of our internet coverage at purpleeagles.com and I get you know what it is worth pointing out that this isn't like the NFL where there has to be conclusive evidence one way or the other to turn it around doesn't matter what was called on the floor they will look and see is it a three or is it a two and they'll make the right call or is it released on time or is it not and in this case the ball was not released on time And this, this is going to, this, this has a chance to be a little bit ugly if they count this. Because I made such a case of it being late. Now Ed McLaughlin, Niagara's athletics director, came over, took a look at the same shot I did, and it, it is in his hands. Well, still waiting for the officials. And again, I... I don't think they can go to our monitor. We could ask Derek Thornton that. If the officials are allowed to come over to our monitor or not, or do they have to stay over there? Yeah, that's what I thought. The word is they would have to stay over there with the official Mac cameras for the replays. And, you know, I'll tell you what, it's, it's not that close. It is not that close on this monitor. Okay. Um, I don't know that that's anything that we can do here. We, we aren't able to do that as Coach Neptune has asked if we could see when the clock started. But I can't imagine that they will say the clock started too late and then award them the basket because, you know, the, the shot clock, or the, excuse me, the timekeeper started a count late. I just have a feeling that, that, that this one's going to end with it, a Niagara 84 82 win. There is a lot of questioning going on. I think the Purple Eagles are going to win it. Well, it is a freezing cold day outside, so you can spend a little bit more time inside. Now the officials, they have, they have concluded their watching of the monitor. They're either going to come out and put their hands up like a field goal, or they're going to wipe it away. Here we go. No good! Ball game over. Purple Eagles win it 84 to 82. Tommy Dempsey and his coaching staff is incensed. And I'll tell you what, it's the right call. The shot was late and Niagara wins it 84-82. And as dramatic as last week was, the Purple Eagles have raised it up one notch.
because the basket should not have counted. A split second late is the difference, and Niagara wins it 84 to 82.